Do you put things off until the last minute? Do you avoid difficult tasks? Are you easily distracted when you should be focused on the project? If you answered yes to any of these questions, today's video is just for you. I'm Tamara Hartley, your advice guru and how to coach. Today, I'm giving you some tips and strategies to help you stop procrastinating. Okay, so before we begin, I have a huge confession to make. But first, you have to promise not to share what I'm about to tell you with anyone. This is just between me and you. Do I have your word? Okay. I used to be the queen of procrastination. Seriously. And I have the crown to prove it. I used to wait until the last minute to do everything. I was so bad that I used to convince myself that I did my best work under pressure, that I would not be able to come up with such good material or ideas if I wasn't working under pressure. I would complete a project and pat myself on the back because it was so good and because I had pulled it off in the nick of time. I prided myself for never missing a deadline. Then one day I asked myself, if this project is this good and it only took you two days to pull it together, what could you have done if you had three days or five days? And in some cases, an entire month to pull it together. By not giving myself enough time, I had to admit that I wasn't doing my best work or putting my best foot forward. Waiting until the last minute is only one form of procrastination and there are so many others like avoiding tasks or working on one project when you should be focused on another. I call this one productive procrastination because while you seem productive, you are really busy doing the wrong thing and avoiding something else. I can go on and on and on about how we procrastinate, but today I want to just focus on how to stop procrastinating and give you five tips and strategies to help you overcome procrastination, even when you may not even know you're procrastinating. One, break down the task. Sometimes a project or job seems so overwhelming that you try to avoid it at all costs. That is until you have to face it head on. And for me, that used to be about a day or two before the deadline. But when you break down a task or project into smaller bite-sized chunks, you give yourself some wiggle room. And once you complete one chunk, it's a bit easier to move on to the next one. The process can become easier, more manageable, and less overwhelming. And once you get started, you might just find yourself on a roll and you're more eager to complete the project. Two, eliminate temptation. Get rid of things that have the potential to distract you. This could be social media, your phone, games, and yes, sometimes even people. Now I'm not telling you to get rid of people just to minimize your interaction with others while you're working or focusing on a project. You can later use these same distractions as your reward system. When you complete a project, reward yourself. Reward yourself by going out with friends or shopping or going to a movie. Three, think about the consequences and the successes. What will you gain or lose by completing your task or project? What are the consequences of not completing your project or making a deadline? What's at stake? This can oftentimes be a great motivator or a driving force to help you get things done. In other words, what do you have to lose? On the flip side, what will you gain? Recognize the successes you will achieve or the joy you will feel when you actually complete the project. Four, make your to-do list public. Let others know what your intentions are and what you're working on. This may add a little bit of pressure on you, but for some, avoiding the disappointment of others or embarrassment can be a great motivator to get things done and to do what you said you're going to do. And five, ask for help. If you are overwhelmed or need help, ask. Sometimes we overwhelm ourselves by taking on too much and then trying to do it all alone. Bringing other skilled and capable people into the project may be just what you need to get it done and to save yourself some time, blood, sweat, and tears. So remember, procrastination is a pattern that can come in many different forms and sometimes it can be unintentional, unrecognized, and unnoticed. We all have put something off until the last minute or until tomorrow, maybe when we feel more up to it. It happens from time to time, but you have to forgive yourself and move on. 
But when avoiding projects and tasks become a pattern in your life and it begins to affect your productivity and takes precedence over accomplishing your goals, it's time to make some changes today and not tomorrow. I hope that you got something from this episode that you can really use to make some positive changes in your life. If you've enjoyed this episode, please be sure to like it and leave your comments below and share this video with others who have a pattern of procrastination and a pattern of avoiding tasks or putting things off and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss an episode. I would love to hear from you. Let me know how you put these tips and strategies to use in your life. As always, you can connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at I'm Tamara Hartley. Also, let me know if there's a topic you would like for me to cover. I love getting your comments, your suggestions, and your feedback. Thanks for spending this time with me, and I'll see you in the next video.